Okay, you guys, this one's tricky. Listen up, don't get electrocuted. <laughs> Not recommended, but if you're looking at something live and you want to see how much current you're drawing or amperage, that would be the best way or best indicated side well you're going to actually work on this device or not. If you're drawing more than two amps on a house circuit, you could fuse that screw and that wire together and that's not a good option, okay? You, a little spark is one thing you'll see that in a demonstration. I'm not even pulling a four amp on here, so one and two is not recommended. But at least uh, I'm going to describe three ways how to do it and I'm going to show you two. The first one is going to be in the video. The second one is going to be in the link below for the meter. I show you in the video. I'm going to put a link to the video for that meter. And it's going to show you the second way. Which is with a device by client under $15. You plug it into an outlet. You plug in your device. Whether it be a hair dryer. A grinder. A power tool. Whatever. And you're going to get a reading. Now when I show the video. I give a description because the tool gives you a reading 10 times what the actual draw is or pulling of current depending on layman's terms okay so be careful with that tool uh, it does work and you don't have to take things apart which is very cool the second way here I'm pulling it out and I'm using a clamp meter and I'm putting that clamp meter around the load now if you don't want to take anything apart and you just want to test the load you can just put it around either hot wire the line or the load and we'll show you what you're actually drawing that's a safer way of doing this instead of what I'm doing right now now if you see you're drawing less than two amps you might say well you know I could do this pair of gloves so on and so forth just be careful okay I don't necessarily recommend this but at least this is three different ways of testing the amperage or the current you're drawing or pulling on that line or that load okay the third way I have to describe because I don't want to necessarily show you. Now I have a video of me pulling the face off a several hundred amp panel, a very large panel. I'm not even sure how many amps it is. It doesn't have a breaker to shut off the entire panel. So, but you see me working alive on there, pulling the face off, giving you a description of the legs, the bus bar, the breakers some of the different size gauge wirings and what they're for so I'll put a description in that also and that would be probably the best way the easiest way electrician would go for it first he would test the line on that circuit coming from that breaker there's at least two different type circuits that I know about in most residential house sometimes commercial residencies when it gets to higher voltage, it can get different. I'm not an electrician, so I'm going as far as I can go on this one. There is parallel and in series. In the top one, it draws current from the hot to the device, the outlet, junction box, switch. And it draws current from the neutral. So you can have one of the devices in the middle here not working, but the rest of the three will work. On the bottom drawing in series, they go from one device to the next. So if the, if the power is coming in this way and it hits the first device, those other three are not going to work. If this one is not working properly, whether it's not working properly internally, or the hot's not going, or the neutral's not coming back to the source, to the panel itself. So you can have a break here, and these other two here will not work. Okay, just give you a general description. Most outlets are in series, and a lot of lighting is in parallel. So it gets mixed up learning how to work with both, because they can be on the same circuit, and it gets tricky. I'm not an electrician, but I'm trying to give you a general description. What I'm describing today is in series. Okay? <laughs> be careful. I'm going to keep warning you on this. Be careful. You see me use gloves. You see me use my clamp meter. I have a different meter, my old school meter, which doesn't have a clamp. That one also tests amps. I'll have to put the hot and hot wire coming out of the breaker and then the neutral on a neutral bar or neutral lead or whatever line. 
and I can get an amp draw with that particular meter is a different meter but for this general description try not to make the video too long just be careful but you can test amperage on a live circuit using these three methods again be careful this is not a how-to video this is just how to check amperage or draw on a line okay if you get anything higher than 120 volt <laughs> Two amps, 240 volt, one amp. Don't touch it. You asking for trouble? I'll see you guys in the next one. Hey Bye. Guys, this one is a little bit tricky. In fact, it's entirely not recommended. I have two settings on here: 12 to 1,000, 70 to 1,000. I use the 70 because it can get ultra sensitive at times with the very low setting. Okay, you can see how you can get it ultra sensitive. It can trick you a little bit, so be careful what setting you use on here. Let's check the actual current we got coming out of there. The small one is the hot side, the large one is the neutral side. Okay. Since these are connected together. I can use neutral on top or the bottom. Doesn't really matter. Okay, let's plug the meter in. Okay, I have, excuse me, 120 volts on the meter right now, okay, AC. Alright, so that unit is hot right now. You're going to look for a few things. The first one is you should be wearing gloves if you're going to attempt anything like this. Second thing is you want to distinguish which one is line and which one is load if you can. I'm going to show you how to do that. It isn't necessarily straightforward. It looks like it is, but that isn't always the case. Okay, so we want to be careful here. We'll just basically pull the outlet out. Now I know from previously touring around with this, this is the line down here, and this is the load. Basically, the electricity is traveling through here. There's a little tab here, and it's transferring the current here, which is going to another device, whether it be another outlet, a switch, junction box, whatever it is. Okay? So if I disconnect this, I should lose some of my electricity. You guys saw that? Can you see the spark? That breaker should have tripped. But it ain't tripping. <laughs> okay. I'm going to put on my other glove just to be safe. I can handle this a little bit better this way without having to worry too much about. Okay. So, okay, might have to open this up a little bit. There we go. Okay. Line, no current at all. If I'm going to disconnect this correctly, I'm going to disconnect the power first, the line. If I can't tell which is which, I'll disconnect one of the wires and I'll find out which one has power and which one doesn't. If I disconnected this one, this will still have power to it. It just won't be transferring to here, so I'll know this one won't be live. This will be the load. This is transferring power to another outlet, device, junction box. This is the line coming in. Okay? 
Again, correct way would be disconnect the line, then the load, then the neutrals, then the ground. Neutrals are the white. Ground is usually bare wire. In this case, we're using aluminum wire. Usually, it's copper. And then sometimes you see them green. When you reconnect it, the ground, the neutral, and finally the load, then the hot. Okay, that's just how it's done. Now, if you really want to be safe here, you want to find out how much amperage you're pulling. When I did the video for this guy here, I showed a device, a tool I use made by clients under $15. I'm able to plug it into the outlet, plug in my device, and it says 10 times on there. So I'm getting 10 times the actual reading, but I describe all of that in the video. It's a very recent video. I'll put a link um, in the description below. And I'll put a link to my tool bag so you guys got an idea what I actually use, okay? After I hook up the power, I can tell how much load is being drawn here. And we're going to do that. You can actually do that before you disconnect the power. You can't tell if it's not connected to the load. Because it's not drawing anything. And it's, it's picking up lights. So let's reconnect everything. I don't know if you guys can see the lights go on here. You see my tools uh, made for electrical. They actually insulate it. I just basically tighten that wire around the nut. So when I tighten it, it stays in place better. Because I got my glove, my arm, things in the way here. So please excuse me. Now we're going to test the load. Now we already know which one is hot. I'm going to take my meter. I'm going to put my meter on amps. Okay. It says AC on the bottom. It says A instead of V for volts. It says amps. You also got a range button if you want to uh, change the range on this particular one. Okay, it's not doing it on this one because it's only 4 amps. Okay, I'm showing 2.1 amps. So something's not being drawn. It might be my monitor that might have turned off. Okay, my monitor went back on. That isn't drawing much more. Let's try opening up the refrigerator. Light went on. She went to 291. Light went off. Open up the refrigerator again. Okay, and that's without a hard start on the compressor on the little rinky thing fridge I got there. But you can see how it jumps. And you guys saw the spark from the line you will see the same thing on the load so if you get confused you would think the load is actually live but something like this would tell you uh, which one is live or you can use the leads on your meter connect one side to the neutral and one side to each line will tell you which one is live which one is not okay it's kind of tricky but this is how you can test it and this is the only way I would work on anything live if it was over per se one, two amps max, I wouldn't work on it. it. Means I'm drawing too much current. I could actually fuse this screw and this wire together or vice versa. Okay? She so just went up. That must be the compressor on my refrigerator just went on. <laughs> it was running before I didn't know. It's pretty silent, but that's why the power draw went up because the compressor is pretty small. It's a little rinky dink. Uh refrigerator I got my little man cave <laughs> but you can see how the draw went up so I'm almost at one amp I would not want to work on this more than two amps if I couldn't tell what the, what the load is if it's only 120 I didn't have anything else on the circle I did I was positive running here I would not consider doing it if I couldn't tell what was on that circuit okay this in series and this parallel and I have to make your drawing for the intro and show you what that is don't forget to look at this video for this meter. It shows you that tool I told you about. How you can check draw 
with just plugging your device into that tool and into the outlet. You don't have to go to this extreme, or you don't, but you do have to have a clamp meter like this to do this. Okay. I also um, did several other videos. I'll put the link here to this one below and my tool bag. Okay. Well now that we're done with checking the load on here, we're gonna put everything back. And so we know, since we know everything is live, we're gonna put our gloves back on and not ground ourselves out. Hopefully, I mentioned about the one hand rule which I only seen on YouTube very recently a gentleman put that up on his video um, could have been on there longer I've been doing this for decades and I've always described it as not grounding yourself out but the one hand method or rule is just a different way of the same method not not grounding yourself out so you're not completing a circuit okay If you don't complete a circuit, you can't pull the full draw on that circuit or full amperage. You can still get shocked, but this is a plastic box, so I don't have to worry about at least hitting anything here. I would just basically put my cover back on after I'm finished. But having a glove on, two gloves on is even better. Okay? If you're going to work on anything live, you're going to test anything live. Alright? This is only a 120 volt circuit, so it isn't as bad. If this was a 240 volt circuit, I would tell you straight out, don't even look at it. Don't even touch it. Call a professional. If you can't shut off the power, he'll figure out how to shut off the power. And he'll know how to do deal with it. He'll know how to check the draw on it, the amperage, and then he'll figure out what he's got to do. <laughs> and he'll get it done one way or the other. Okay, there's plenty of ways for electricians to do this. I am not an electrician, so I'm just giving you a general description, okay?